Whether you're an entry-level gamer or a seasoned enthusiast, the new Kingston HyperX Blue Memory combines extreme performance and low temperatures with a price tag that will make everyone happy. For more information, visit www.kingston.com slash HyperX. Hi, this is Greg Idra Fields of Teen Evil Geniuses, and this is an EG Pro Replay review brought to you by Kingston HyperX. Today we'll be seeing me versus Kiwi Kaki from MLG DC. It will be a ZVZ, ZVP played on the map Scrap Station. Here we can see me as the red Zerg at the top position and Kiwi Kaki as the blue Protoss at the far right position. This is a very good map for ZVP, possibly the best in the pool. The rush distance is so long that Protoss really has to do a kind of a ridiculous all-in build to put any pressure on the Zerg early game. And also because of the close air positions, your Overlord is able to scout them really quickly, so you can scout any kind of build like that very early on. So it's just very difficult for Protoss to put any kind of pressure on Zerg or early game. However, we will ki see Kiwi do one of the few strategies that can uh, apply that kind of pressure early to the Zerg, and uh, we'll see how I respond to it. See him build this pylon down below the ramp. This is commonly used for a fast expansion build, and blocking off this choke, and uh, depending on high ground cannons over here in order to secure this expansion. This is um, much more vulnerable now after the patch that extended roach range, however. And here we see me droning up, headed for a fast expansion build, not pulling down a pool yet. However, he has scouted really early, so he sees this. He knows that I don't have the quick pool. As such, he puts down a forge because he intends to cannon rush me. And the cannon rush really kind of nullifies the rush distance because you're not depending on sending any units over. You're just building cannons here and kind of, that's it. Here I put down the expansion, he sees this, and he immediately, immediately puts down the pylon for the cannon rush. My response to this is actually map unique here because the distance between here and the natural is so long that it's very difficult for me to defend this. Even though there's no support here, it's just a cannon rush. It takes me so long to get my drones down here, so long to get zerglings or a queen down here, that it's really it's kind of futile. Especially since the architecture of the natural makes it very difficult to kill drones. If I send drones down here, I only have two attacking here and one here, and two here. And that really just doesn't do damage quickly enough to take out the cannons before they morph in. So really it's almost pointless to try and defend this. So I keep my drones up here mining, I calmly go towards the spawning pool and get gas, and I send my drone out here to take this expansion. And I'm simply waiting here, waiting to cancel, hoping that he'll let these cannons finish so he has wasted extra money on the rush. However, he realizes what I'm doing and he cancels out. That was very smart by him. And here, after, after establishing that cannon rush, he now begins to attack a gateway and gas. And so I have a cannon here so he's safe against any kind of rush. And I, my spawning pool is finished, I've started to kill like gas. I'll build a queen here soon, I'm getting some zerglings. Have to be very careful to chase this probe and make sure he doesn't cannon rush this base, because this you cannot afford to lose. You can't cancel that and then remake another hatchery at this stage of the game. You have to secure this one. So it's very important to keep an eye on that probe and any other probes in this area. Here you see Kiwi put down a cyber core. This is uh, somewhat strange. A lot of Protosses will opt to fast expand here. They already have this area secured off and they have some idea what I'm doing. They know I'm expanding. They know I don't have any kind of roach all in in store for them or anything like that. So it seems like a fast expansion would be safe, but he's opted to go for a tech route. And he also has, still has this probe alive here. This is very important. Protoss has to keep that probe alive because, well, they don't have to, but it's incredibly valuable to keep it alive because it adds in um, the potential to have more aggression up here. Put a cannon up here and to add in cannons over here, or even gateways, and just to kind of make sure that this position stays in Protoss control because that opens up the door for much more warp gate aggression later on, which we will see in a moment here as he's, warp, he's chronoing in warp gate there. I have my lair on the way. I have my second queen building and I send this one down here. Make sure to get that creep tumor in this situation because there is much bigger distance between your main and your expansion than normal. 
So creep becomes all the more valuable as it speeds up your unit movement even more. Here I'm getting a brush warren. This is a very smart decision here because this is really such a vulnerable area. You either know that he's going to be attacking, in which case the roaches are um, a very good defensive unit, or that he's going to be taking expansion like he is here, in which case it's very easy to pressure because uh, this is very vulnerable to roaches. And this is kind of a very strange build by him. He is chronoing out warp gate. He is going to be aggressive, but he's also expanding at the same time. And this is actually... I don't really agree with this decision-making process because by expanding he expends so many resources on things that aren't units that his army is then really underpowered when he does finally get aggressive and it just it's kind of a strange choice by him. Nine times out of ten you're going to want to either commit to economy or to units. It's, it's very ineffective to really just kind of go halfway just because you're not going to have enough units to really overpower, overpower your opponent. And we'll see this here. Had he committed completely to this, he would have had, had another 400 minerals invested in his army. This would be much more powerful. As is, it's only four stalkers. It's very annoying. I am in a little bit of danger here, but he doesn't have blink. He doesn't have cannons up here supporting it. He has a pretty limited army, so I am capable of holding it off at this point. But at the same time, he doesn't even have any probes down here because he is investing in these units. So really, he's just kind of not focused on what he wants to accomplish. And as such, he's not going to accomplish anything. Here you can see, it's a bit of a micro battle at this point, but it's very downhill for him. I have rope speed on the way. I have two hatcheries, two queens, full production going. I have a spine crawler up, and I have zergling speed. And he is stuck with just purely stalker zealot, which isn't a very powerful army especially not in low unit counts. At this point, you really need sentries and force fields to make anything happen, but he just can't afford that because he did invest in the expansion and the cannon rush before doing the sword gate pressure. He is able to do some damage just because his cannon rush was effective early on and that set me back a little bit, but as we see, his rush is slowly falling apart as my production and my upgrades kick in and he's still stuck with basic units. And as we can see, I have, actually I have less, uh, less workers than him, but because I was able to crush that um, attack pretty solidly, I now have a big army advantage, which I can use to put pressure on him and scare him out of making more probes, make more drones myself, or just to simply kill him, because he is in such a uh, hard to defend situation. He only had the two gases for so long, that means he's not gonna have many sentries. He can't use force field to survive, which is Protoss' normal, normal option. He also doesn't, and so he's stuck on basic units against Roach Sling, which is a pretty good advantage for Zerg in this situation. Especially on a map like this, where it's um, pretty difficult to defend. You have these two relatively open areas, and you have to deal with both of them. And knowing this, I'm taking down these rocks to open up the back path. That way I don't have to fight solely through this. That would give that would allow him to defend, but as is, he just doesn't have the units to deal with uh, aggression coming through both paths. He also has some units stuck up here trying to be aggressive, but really it's not enough to do to accomplish anything. It's just kind of a little annoyance. Here, I'm abusing the roach range. This cannon is... Mm, it's no longer possible to place a cannon to defend an entire wall in like this. Before the four roach range, uh, you could do that, but now you can't. So I'm taking advantage of that, picking it the forge, just buying time until my army is big enough to actually go in for the kill. I take out the forge, that blocks his plus one. He put down a pylon here, which is smart, it buys him time, but it's simply not enough. I just have way too many units because he wasted too much on that half-hearted early aggression. And here we see he's still stuck with just roaches, or just stalkers and zealots, which really isn't enough uh, in this situation. He needs higher tech to deal with my, uh, my army composition and my upgrades. Here he's adding more gateways. This is kind of a poor decision. It actually traps his army for me. Um, I'm not sure why he did that, but it cost him because it allowed me to trap his army like that. It really killed his mobility, which is the only thing I ha he had going for him. And I'm able to take out his army and just kill him. This was uh, 
honestly a very strange game. His decision making was kind of poor after the cannon rush. The cannon rush gained him a great advantage, it cancelled my expansion, forced me out here in a very vulnerable position, but then instead of committing to the pressure or taking advantage of the economy, he tried to do both and he, he just wasn't able to accomplish either of them. And I took advantage of that with some quick roach zergling pressure and was able to just clean him up from there despite my economy disadvantage. This has been an EG Pro Replay review brought to you by Kingston HyperX. For more information on Kingston and his HyperX line of product, visit kingston.com slash hyperx and for more great StarCraft II content, visit the Evil Geniuses team website at www.myeg.net. Whether you're an entry-level gamer or a seasoned enthusiast, the new Kingston HyperX Blue Memory combines extreme performance and low temperatures with a price tag that will make everyone happy. For more information, visit www.kingston.com slash hyperx.